let's see, computer books, software, joystick, what should I get them? If you're trying to figure out what to get the hacker on your Christmas shopping list, Gary, Wendy Woods, Paul Schindler, George Morrow, and I'll be here in just a minute to give you our picks for Christmas presents from the computer store on this special Christmas edition of the Computer Chronicles. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by grants from AFIPS, the American Federation of Information Processing Societies, a nonprofit federation of 11 national societies for computer professionals. AFIPS, leadership and service in computer and information technology. Additional funding is provided by McGraw Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover the latest in microcomputer technology worldwide. Byte the international standard. Welcome to the Computer Chronicles. I'm Stuart Chaffe, but it's either Gary Claus or Santa Kildall. I'm not sure which. Gary, this is the ultimate high-tech Christmas present for the hacker on your list. It's a Christmas card on a floppy disk. It's $9.95. It's called the Jingle Disk from Thoughtware, and it just plays a whole series of animated Christmas cards and Christmas jingles, as you can tell. The only thing I don't know how to do is to stop this thing. Well, let me use a little hardware adjustment here. My bit banger, I'll work on it a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> My frustration's out. <laughs> is this hardware or software? It's right? a hardware adjustment. <laughs> Gary, we're going to be talking about uh, computer Christmas presents uh, on this show. you have any things you're buying for well, people? Well, this is sort of use? a tinker toy for Techie's show, and uh, what I went out and did as an excuse is went out and bought, bought myself a present. <laughs> okay, well, you're going to show it to us in just a little bit. We're going to have the whole Computer Chronicles family here to go through a list of computer Christmas presents for the hacker on your list. We're going to start out by going out and seeing how the computer shopping season is going out at the computer stores. Entertaining for some and a nightmare for others, the year's biggest retail event is Christmas. Normally, placid shoppers rush into crowded stores, and every kind of consumer product gets a boost in sales, including computers. I think the computers are moving very well this year. The drop in prices in the expensive top-of-the-line machines has picked up sales in that area and taken away a little from the less expensive machines. While the range of affordable machines has expanded, different features appeal to different kinds of customers. A youngster is more likely to want color graphics than a spreadsheet, so Christmas sales of low-end computers are brisk. But as the gap narrows between home and office machines, all shoppers are getting smarter. People are, uh, have gotten more knowledgeable, which is helpful. Um, they do seem to know what they want. They have people, friends who ha own computers, have computers, use computers. So they're able to get better counsel from their friends. Computer sales have been disappointing this year, and many stores have closed their doors for good. But retailers are optimistic that computers will continue to excite the public. Well, we're expecting this to be the best part of the year. Uh, history will tell whether it was a great year or what. Um, we're not deterred by the last year as far as things being in a slump. It should be good. Well, joining us now in the studio are a couple of characters I'm sure you're familiar with. If you watch the show, here's Santa Claus over here, <laughs> Gary Kildall, whom you all know, of course, already. Paul Schindler is joining us. Paul, our regular software reviewer, and in his other life, the senior West Coast editor of Information Week magazine. And over here, this character, George Morrow, our sometime host and regular commentator, and uh, also, coincidentally, the founder and chairman of Morrow Design, makers of the Pivot Computer. Right. Well, we will talk about hardware in the next section. Yeah, Let's th get this is soft. Don't, don't tell us to buy the Pivot for Christmas <laughs> quite yet. <laughs> Now, uh, Gary, we're going to talk about software. Okay, well, let me give the first software gift. Uh, Paul has been admiring my hat, so before he, rip, oh, he rips it off my head, I'm going to turn it over to him as a piece of software. <laughs> <laughs> it's more, more appropriate to my image than yours, Gary. Okay, yeah. we know who the clown in the crowd That's is right, right. now. <laughs> the Willard Scott of the Computer Chronicles. <laughs> okay, Gary, I, I want to do one thing before we get on to what the other guys have here. Uh, we showed Christmas software at the beginning of this mm -hmm. Christmas card on a floppy disk. I want to show you this holiday software is interdenominational. This is a program called All About Hanukkah by Davka of Chicago.
and it has a bunch of different programs in here to help kids celebrate the Hanukkah season. And one thing you can see is it actually lights the menorah for you, telling how many nights you want to light, and it lights up the menorah for mm -hmm. you. So you've got uh, Hanukkah software, Christmas software. Kids is a big part of Christmas, well, Stuart, obviously. And what have you got? The way that I, I looked at this, we, we, there's many opportunities to spend a lot of money in the computer uh, industry. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Expensive software that goes $100 on up, uh, add-on boards, things of that sort. If you're trying to get an inexpensive gift, one possibility is to go into a bookstore and try and find yeah. something that's appropriate for a, a child or, or an mm -hmm. adult, whatever. The trouble is you go into a, a store and you're going to find anything from ABCs on up to mm -hmm. textbooks for artificial intelligence. Uh, now, I took two cases. So we have three kids in the, at the home that are all like the computers in one way or another. Uh, Forrest is nine years old. You didn't want to spend a big <laughs> <box> <laughs> Yeah, right. That's right. <laughs> what she finds. And uh, uh, Forrest likes to play games on his Commodore 64, but he also liked to learn basic. Uh -huh. And so one book that I picked up for him was uh, his kids in the Commodore 64. And, of course, this is not, it's not oriented toward playing games, but uh, oriented toward learning mm -hmm. basic. Now, yeah. uh, the important thing here is it's got a lot of cartoons and it keeps the interest of the child. And it's only... Uh, $13, so that's a good start. Now, Christy is, uh, on the other hand, likes to play around with the, uh, the Mac and draw uh -huh. pictures and this, this sort of thing. This is your daughter. And daughter, and she doesn't, uh, doesn't like to learn to program, want to learn to program or anything else, <laughs> right. but she likes to draw. And so this book here, Becoming a Mac Artist, is an example of one that's very much oriented toward her needs of, mm -hmm. of learning how to create uh, repeating forms, for example, repeating border samples, and shows her how to use this thing in a way that, oh, let's say an illustrator would, would uh, Learn to use yeah. machine. You're going to keep the surprise in Christmas, keep him from watching the show before Christmas Day, <laughs> right? right? <laughs> okay, Gary, I'm very proud of you. You didn't tell us to buy concurrent CPM or Jam or well, any of that stuff. Those are too yeah. obvious. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, George, let's get back to you. We're talking software now. That's now, right. what to you would be the ideal software gift for somebody at Christmas time? Well, uh, you know, my orientation is uh, an awful lot toward the business marketplace and. Uh, with the stock market doing the things they are now, it seems Signal software is a really innovative product that uh, is going to uh, not only help you with your investments, but, but protect you on the downside. You know, they've got uh, part of that software uh, will alert you when your stocks uh, start to drop so that you can sell before. Okay, tell, tell, describe Signal. That's very new. Most people well, don't know Signal, what it is. Signal uh, allows you to track your investments and uh, to, to uh, put performance criteria into what you want out of your okay, investment. I mean, but it's different from other software. It's real time, right? You've got a radio. It is receiver, real time. Right? There's an FM receiver uh, associated oh, with good. it. <laughs> and uh, and you are tracking the market just as it goes on, and it's a very innovative product. It's kind of a, a Lotus add-on, right? I mean, you can sit there and be running Lotus, and, and, and at the same time, you're receiving over the airwaves That's true. That's uh, true. stock quotes. That's yeah. right. Stuart, no, that's interesting, yeah. the thing that strikes me about Signal is that I have friends who are serious professional investors. It's hard to talk about serious and professional <laughs> <laughs> that uh, as recently as three years ago were offered that capability uh, at a cost of, if memory serves me, $8,000 yes, for the software, right. and uh, you had to have a separate telephone line to that's receive right. the quotes from the market, right. and Signal is uh, a few hundred dollars. That's mm -hmm. right. No, it's quite a product. It's uh, right. part of this whole movement. Everything gets cheaper and faster. Okay, so now, the, go ahead. Now, you, there is a product that I wish was around this Christmas. I'd <laughs> like to have a product where I could give a, a gift uh, membership to a user's group, but I haven't been able oh, to find yeah, that. I think that would be a really yeah. good product. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's not available yet right now. Okay, Paul, you're the software uh, genius here, and you've got some packages there. <laughs> what, what are your software picks for Christmas? Well, I, I brought a few. You asked me to pick my favorite packages, and uh, so I looked through the last couple of seasons of reviews, and I picked the packages that I really like myself, the ones that are uh, yeah, daily of the most used to me. to a child's mind. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. One of the things, uh, just in passing, George, you can give Christmas uh, memberships uh, for sure that I know of to the source. And they'll send a little certificate. Hmm. Hmm. And That's I, in fact, because I gave one it two years ago as, as a Christmas idea. gift to a friend of mine, it's, uh, I don't know what the current pricing is, about $100 mm -hmm. to join. Mm -hmm. And uh, probably CompuServe allows the same thing. And for people who aren't yet into bulletin boards and communicating, that's a terrific it's a Christmas gift. Yeah. Well, and the reason for my comment about the user group, it is the best source of, of support for any uh, computer use. So mm -hmm. in other words, when you, it's going to be like when you get that Christmas toy on Christmas morning, That's you're not right. going to know what to do, do with it. Do with it. You're going to have to go to the user. Exactly right. right. <laughs> well, I am um, uh, not a lot to show, but uh, I, I, my, my word processor. Now, everybody with an IBM PC says that their word processor is the best one <laughs> in the world, right. but the they're they all wrong, and I'm right. <laughs> This one is uh, called, it's from a company called ZyQuest in Bedford, Massachusetts. Now, it costs $300, but it's called Zyrite. And it is, I'm sorry, it is the best. You reviewed this one. Word processor. We've, yeah, I yeah. think we reviewed everything that I'm, uh -huh. I'm talking about here. But I brought them because they're my favorites. I use it every day. Now, is it the best for everybody? Maybe not. But for a professional writer like me, it's the fastest. 
world's worst documentation, but it's fast. Mm -hmm. uh, however, okay. Christmas is mostly for what kids, else? and so I brought along one kid thing and, and uh, one piece of software for people who are kids at heart. Uh, the uh, kid software that I brought along is uh, Reader Rabbit. Now, this is $50. And uh, uh, it's made by the Learning Company in Menlo we, Park, California. We have California. this up on the Apple. Uh, we have now. it up on and the let, Apple. Let's sort of run through how this works, and uh, I'll, I'll hit the buttons. You tell me what to do. I'm one behind Gary here. I have a four-year-old and a one-year-old. The one-year-old isn't on the computer yet, but the four-year-old uh, takes lessons on an Apple uh, twice a week, and uh, this is one of her favorites. Now you'll see here it's going to give us a pattern to match to. Now George asked us before we asked me before we started how how long would a kid be interested in this, and I know it seems amazing. But my daughter's been using this thing for months. Go ahead and push the space bar. Okay. Uh, and uh, you'll see it'll give us a pattern. It's, we're looking for words okay. that start with... Hit the space bar, quick! Okay, we can't... Otherwise, we <laughs> won't We're looking get, for words that start, start with G. G. That's right. You've got to be fast with this one. This is one. a test now. This is a test now. <laughs> now, now let, 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 let this go, okay. and it drops into the garbage can. And um, uh, I know it seems boring, and I know it seems pointless, but teachers tell me it helps teach you to read, and my daughter okay, tells that's me... That's a take. What happens? Reader rabbit dances. Okay, and that's... <laughs> it's a reward, and it doesn't seem like much of a reward to us, but kid, what can I tell you? Kids, kids are kids different. Really enjoy it. What else kids do you enjoy. Have here, Paul? Uh, I've got Ultimate Trivia, which is a, uh, a game for grown-ups, and uh, I, under, I just found out today that nobody on the staff here of the Chronicles believed me in my review when I said I play it every morning. I do play it every morning, and in fact, I have to turn the sound off. The hat to, really does fit. The, <laughs> I have to turn the sound off to keep my wife from asking me, "Well, why aren't you working, Paul?" Fi I work at home. Fifty dollars. Ultimate trivia from Mentor Learning Systems in uh, California it, somewhere. How does it help your day? Uh, it gets me. I like to play trivia. It, it gets me started. It gets the juices going in the Something morning. Something like it, a cup of coffee for the normal person. Yeah, right? for a cup of coffee for the, Santa Clara, California. Okay, is where real, I'm learning real quick. We only real have quick. A couple minutes. Back up. Uh, the best hundred and fifty dollars you'll ever spend if you got a hard disk. I'm telling you, the first time your hard disk crashes, you're going to wish you had already owned this package. And uh, finally, uh, Higgins. Uh, dullest packaging on the market. Four hundred dollars. Most expensive package I'm going to recommend. But I'm telling you, if you need to get organized. It's ACES. It's absolutely top-notch. Kinetic Systems, Portland, Oregon, and I highly recommend it. Now, Stuart, you have something also. I, sh I sure do. This, is, this goes back to kids, I think, and this is one of the cleverest uses of a computer I've ever seen. If you have an Apple II at home and if you have a kid, this is great. It turns your computer into a kind of a science chemistry lab. What you do is go into the joystick port with this little thing. You've got a thermistor, measures temperature over here, a photoelectric hmm. cell that measures uh, light, and you've got all kinds of different electronic meters now. For instance, I can pick thermometer, go into the thermometer mode, and we'll tell it to start measuring temperature. And here it is, and it's telling it's 90 degrees in the studio right now, guys. <laughs> That's really clever. OK, That's now good. I can get out of that. And let's see if I escape and get back to this main menu. We'll get to our light meter here. And I can show you. Uh, we'll find out how many foot candles are going in the studio right now if I tell it to start. And there we go, 3.1 foot candles. There's our little light mm -hmm. meter going over there. It also has a timer in here so you can you know, do experiments and actually time them. Let's see, I've got to get back here to uh, go down to our timer and call up the timer. And you'll see this is pretty neat, too. You get a timer over here. You can start it. You have a digital readout. Your little timer keeps oh, on going. Clever. So very you can clever. time your experiments. We can get out of that. And finally, there's another terrific feature in here, which is this thing called strip chart. And if I go into strip chart, I can actually draw a graph of the results of what it is I'm measuring. Mm -hmm. So here we go. And we can see this is just a your little typical thing. And if I hit go, there's it going along there, oh. and I'm not doing anything right now, so whatever it is I'm measuring isn't changing. Anyhow, I think this is a terrific way to turn a computer into a Like the chemistry a kit, except right, that exactly. it, it, it can't it. stain and it can't <laughs> blow up. Well, right. it may blow up. Anyhow, it's called Science Tool Kit, and it's from Broderbund. Okay, we've been talking about software. We're going to have Wendy Woods join us in just a moment, and we'll take a look at some of the neat hardware presents for Christmas on your shopping list. So stay with us. Joining us now is Wendy Woods, who most of you know is our reporter on the Computer Chronicles, and Wendy is also the editor-in-chief of News Bites on The Source. And back with us is George Morrow and Gary. Uh, <laughs> that used to be Paul Schindler just a minute ago. Now, what kind of toy is this you got? I've got them all mic'd up and ready to go here. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, uh, you brought uh, A.G. Bear in here. What's mm -hmm. he all about? Well, A.G. Bear is, is one of my favorite toys this year, and if you like computers, this is the toy for your kids or for yourself. Uh, this is one of those toys that's come out of Axlon, and they're putting microprocessors in, in little bears and cats. A.G. Bear is and... Is that Nolan Bushnell's? Nolan Bushnell's firm, right, in Sunnyvale. 
Um, this little bear will talk back to you. First, you have to wake him up. <laughs> you have to wake him up. Hello, AG. How are you today? Is that right? Huh? Say hello. A good guest. <laughs> <laughs> Say hello to Gary. Hi, AG. How are you doing? <laughs> that's that's basically all he does. He'll respond to you depending on the um, pitch of your voice. No, I understand and he also goes to sleep for after a while, right? Yes, if you don't talk to him for about uh, 20, 30 seconds, he'll just nod off and you have to pick him up again and shake him to wake him up. <laughs> this is going to yeah. be great really for good. kids going to bed, isn't it? Definitely. Um, one of the advantages is the bear listens, too. Yeah. It usually will listen to you talk and then respond. And I understand that children have a good time just carrying on conversations yeah. with it, and it does talk back. What kind of battery? Sorry to ruin the illusion, but what kind of battery? <laughs> this is really not a bad <laughs> No, he has a battery, too. <laughs> you open him up here. Um, it takes regular uh, C batteries, uh -huh. and it's got... It should probably last pretty long, I guess. Yeah, just to do a little dissection. <laughs> this... <laughs> oh, this is really terrible. <laughs> <laughs> this is basically what's in him. It's a little oh, speaker, that's the truth. little oh, microphone, okay. and you put the battery in here. And, uh, how, how much does that, that guy cost? This costs about $30, and it's sold um, throughout the country, I understand, in every city. Um, department stores and toy stores. A.G. Bear. Mm -hmm. how, do you Bear? know how long the batteries last, Wendy? Apparently, they do last a long time. Mm -hmm. well, that's um, good. That's cute. That's that is cute. pretty neat. Now, I know you have some other little animals there, but we'll get back to those in okay. just a second, Wendy. George, we're talking hardware this segment. What's the neatest hardware Christmas present out there? Well, I like the PC compatibles. And uh, Epson is ruling out a new one this year. This, uh, this is the man who makes the pivot talking. That's now, right. right. Okay, that's go right. ahead. Well, I'm, we're talking bang for the buck here. Okay, okay. And I think the Epson, Epson tried once and sort of fell on their face, right. but they've come back and they've now got a product at $9.95 that is supposed to be very, very IBM compatible. And uh, it's the second time out, and generally these, the Japanese get it done quite well the second time out. So uh, I know it's compatible. The price has got to be right at $9.95. What, what, what's included at $9.95? I mean, drives, memory, and so you on. You get one drive, you get 256K of memory, you, get a, uh, you don't get a monitor, but you do get the graphics uh, card. And uh, so it'll, it's a fairly complete machine, not totally complete. So pretty good IBM PC compatible for $9.95 right. plus That's monitor. Right. That's right. Uh, so if you want to buy somebody a computer, a compatible. It's not a bad That's choice. That's a good pick. Not a bad choice. <laughs> okay, he wants to buy an Epson <laughs> computer, and you want to buy a printer, which well, isn't an Epson. You, what do you I'll got? I'll tell you, I thought about this problem of what would I want, what would I actually use, and I went through. It was, I just went to Comdex and looked at all the new things that were going on there, and I guess I. Did you get I in the shuttle? <laughs> 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 Take we, this battery. We love, out. We love you, AG, but we're going to have to put you over in the corner. <laughs> I ahead, went through uh, things like voice recognition and speech synthesis <laughs> and image scanners and things of like that, and I thought those are all really neat gadgets, and I love gadgets, but I thought it'd be practical and say, what would I really use? And uh, in fact, uh, a couple weeks ago, I picked up a little printer for doing some debugging work that had uh, on a particular program that used a printer. And I went down and found uh, this Loki data, 192. And the reason I like this one, and I'll say this, this is actually a, a, uh, I'd say a group of printers in this category that are very lightweight. Uh, you can put them in a, in a briefcase. You can carry them along with the compact, for example, with your uh, transportable computer system. And what I, didn't, I hadn't purchased a printer for for uh, years, I think, and, I, and last night I purchased probably an old Centronics 101 or something mm -hmm. like that. I found that this little machine did the same thing that those old bulky machines did that cost $2,000 yeah. a few years ago. Uh, it does all, in fact, it does everything. It scrunches the paper up <laughs> when it misfeeds and everything. <laughs> all the bad habits of the old printers. But I'd say for, from my standpoint, from program developer, if you have someone at home that likes to write programs and have a little printer, it's a good choice. How much does it cost, Gary? Uh, it's, uh, it's, I've seen them from $400 to $500 in their and price. And how much does it weigh? Uh, I didn't get the exact, uh, I don't know what exactly what it is, but it's, it's very lightweight. And, uh, and, they're, and they come slightly larger, and, and, but it's a nice fit with a portable computer, something like that. Now, a, uh, a, it's a dot matrix a, printer? Dot matrix printer, uh, near letter quality. Near letter and quality. And again, I don't want to endorse this exact computer, sure. uh, this exact printer, but the idea is that we have some really nice, small, portable printers like this right now that are on the market. Okay. You know, there are, there are a class of developing printers that are even smaller than that that run from batteries. The printing quality isn't nearly yeah. as good. Right, and I think in this particular case, what I'm looking at is my personal computer that I use is a, is a Compact 286. And, and that kind of a computer system is a large memory system, a hard disk, and things of that sort. You, it's really not the kind of thing you use on an airplane, sure. but you're going to have an AC plug, and you want yeah. this thing to run very, very fast. Sure. 160 characters per, per minute is nothing. Well, that is very fast. Yeah. Okay, speaking of using on an airplane, or using in the <laughs> bathtub for that matter, here's my pick, okay? This is a tiny new little computer. I guess you can't even call wow. it a microcomputer. Oh 
This is a, just a delightful little machine. It's called the Access, and it just came out from a company called Mellar Technologies of New York, and it's mm -hmm. an incredible little machine. It really operates a lot like, say, a Radio Shack Model 100. It obviously doesn't have a real great touch typing it's keyboard. It's a lot smaller, isn't it? But it's a lot smaller, but it's interesting. Even though it has a 40 column by uh, 8 row screen, which mm -hmm. isn't too bad, mm -hmm. you can actually create 80 column by 24 line documents and window across them. Mm -hmm. So it'll wrap at whatever size you want. It opens up in a nice function menu like, uh, like a lot of those other portables do. It has a built in word processor, which isn't too bad. So uh, immediately I could go, say, to my text menu. <coughs> Excuse me. The thing I like about this is it's pretty <coughs> clever in its file searching capacity. So besides the word processor, it handles files almost like a filer, like a database manager. So if I want to go find a particular file in here, uh, it, I can just find it normally and give it the file name. But if I don't remember how often we look for a file, we forget what you called the file. Mm -hmm. Okay, it'll do a keyword search of all the files. Oh, Say, so give me the file that had Kill mm -hmm. Doll's name in it, mm -hmm. and it'll come up with it. Or if I can't do that, I can call up files by the first six lines of each document, and it'll just scan through those if I don't remember what Sir, it was called. Sir, do you have a... a do you have a way of communicating them with another computer system transfer Well, that's, files that's actually the beauty of this. It's got a modem, comes in with it, it's got a mm -hmm. little port right over here, and it comes with an acoustic coupler. So the theory is you carry this around, you're at the airport, you can't get to a modular plug, you just go to a payphone, put it on. Uh, it's got the, the built-in communication software in here. I guess I can go back here, and one of the choices is telecom menu. And you can see I can get in there. So I can uh, go get uh, Wendy's News Bites off the source or call up CompuServe or Dow Jones or my home <laughs> banking or whatever. Uh, I can easily download things in here. Uh, I can upload to my computer back home. I can go right so out of this port. It's a, it's a real computer. computer. Yeah. It really is quite amazing. Uh, we should, for the viewers, <coughs> I guess we ought to mention that uh, the screen is uh, really excellent. Uh, it has very good contrast and there's it's very qu low It's reflection. quite amazing to get the 40 columns and the 8 pretty good. Now, another thing I like about this is watch this deal. It has 40K internal memory and 64K memory cartridges. So you can carry a couple of these around in your pocket, have a lot okay. of storage, and they're coming out with application software on these cartridges. You just shove it in there, and that there you go. Can, that can be either RAM or ROM then. That's right, exactly. And it runs on a very little battery back here, runs for about 10 hours, not plugged in. Is this programmable in any sense? Could you go past the word processor and actually do any programming? Uh, I understand, not yet, but I understand you'll be able to buy a basic cartridge or another mm -hmm. programming language cartridge. Which and did you, you say the price of this? To program. It starts at $500, depending on the memory configuration. Mm -hmm. So we only have a minute left, and I want to see what those cats are all okay, about. Okay, right these now. are called Petsters, and they're another toy from Axlon. Uh, right now, it's just a cat. Apparently, next year, they're coming out with a dog. Petsters are responsive to your voice or to claps. I guess so. <laughs> and they have minds of their own. Um, they supposedly will purr if you say purr, but I haven't been able to get them to do that. Clap. <laughs> <laughs> Go to you Stuart. have two of them. Now, do they mate? Is that one of their tricks here, Wendy? <laughs> no, I just thought it would be double trouble. Uh, go ahead, clap. The oh, it... There we there go. Goes. Well, that's close. <laughs> that's the hardware good. comes to the hardware designer. <laughs> okay, now... Go ahead. <laughs> okay, Wendy, what's going on inside here? Uh, well, there's a little custom chip in there, and it, uh, it's got limited voice recognition. It responds to about um, 10 different verbal commands. Come oh. here. Okay, does, does, it, does it respond uh, to we're out of time? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and we are. I'm sorry, Wendy. I hope you have a very pleasant Christmas from all of us here, and hope you find a nice high-tech toy under your Christmas tree. We'll see you next time. In the Random Access file this week, December computer sales are looking good, but not because of Christmas. The most activity seems to be in business computers, where buyers are motivated more by year-end tax considerations than by holiday giving. Projections now are that home computer sales will be slower than last year, while office computer sales will be up more than 30%. At the low end, the surprise hit of the season is the orphaned Atom computer, which is selling better than it did last year. Discounts on the PC Junior and on Apple's are also pumping up holiday sales. The rumors are getting hot and heavy about IBM's new operating system. One version of the story is that Microsoft will come out with a generic DOS 5.0, but that IBM will come out with its own superset of 5.0 that will take advantage of the AT's 8286 microprocessor, but still be compatible with existing DOS software. The main features of the new DOS will include better graphics, addressing more than 640K of memory, multitasking, and connectivity with mainframes. It may just be coincidence, but now that Steve Jobs has gone from Apple, his former partner Steve Wozniak is buying up Apple stock. 
The Waz reportedly has bought $5 million worth of Apple shares and plans to buy more. Data General says it has a new lap portable that will have a built-in hard disk drive and an easy-to-read screen. The new product is being described as a laptop XT. In our legislative update file, the chairman of the House Government Operations Committee says the Social Security Administration's new computer system is a mess, suffering from missed deadlines, cost overruns, and political problems. The computers are now expected to cost nearly a billion dollars, almost double the original estimate, and two Social Security officials have been found guilty of soliciting bribes in connection with contracts for software. It's time for our software pick of the week, and here is the unbribable Paul Schindler. You know, it doesn't seem to take much to make a boot kick, right? But if you think of a boot as a metaphor easily grasped by children, you've made the first step into the world of make-believe in which you'll find Rocky's boots. This is one fantastic, complicated game. Even adults can learn from it. MIT graduates like myself may have to pinch themselves to be sure they've not died and gone to heaven. This program works okay with a keyboard, but it's a lot better with a joystick. Like other learning company games, the on-screen image is one of walking through a series of rooms, learning things. In Rocky's Boots, what you're learning about is electrical circuits. The cursor provides electricity, which runs the circuits. Sensors are connected via wires to clackers. The program teaches young people about real logic circuits. This is not just a dry tutorial, it's a game. So anytime you want, you can go into the big room and test your skill at building the kind of big machines that Rocky really likes. Can you build a machine that kicks out only blue crosses? If you succeed, you can get Rocky to dance. Well, we didn't manage it this time, but you can if you buy and use Rocky's Boots, a real kick for $50 from the learning company in Menlo Park, California. For the Computer Chronicles, I'm Paul Schindler. You want software? Listen to this. Reference Technology is selling a CD-ROM for the IBM PC that has over 8,000 programs on it, and it's free if you buy the optical drive for $1,600. Borland International is reportedly buying up the electronic publishing rights to reference works like Bartlett's, the Columbia Encyclopedia, and Black's Law Dictionary. Can the Turbo Reference Disk be far behind? If you have a PC Junior and you're determined to use it for business, you can now buy a hard disk drive for the Junior. It's $800 from TW Technologies. And if you need a break from staring at spreadsheets, there's a new RAM resident program called Chuckle Pops. It stores hundreds of jokes in your computer, so when you get fed up trying to figure out where cell H27 came from, you can take a laugh break. It's $14.95 from Enlightened Software. Finally, Jack Tremiel had the last laugh at the winter Comdex. Atari was probably the only company that knew it would make money at Comdex. Why? Because Atari sublet its big booth to 45 different software vendors who were writing for the 520ST. They each paid Tremiel a thousand bucks for the right to help man the Atari booth. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll see you next time. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by grants from AFIPS, the American Federation of Information Processing Societies, a nonprofit federation of 11 national societies for computer professionals. AFIPS, leadership and service in computer and information technology. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover the latest in microcomputer technology worldwide. Byte the international standard.